All right, grab a snack and get ready to enter the judgment-free zone. <laughs> Those are the two things. You're gonna need some hydration, which I have right here. I'm very tired today, I'm very tired, and it hasn't gotten any better, <laughs> despite the copious amounts of caffeine. So I'm trying caf so I'm trying hydration for once. We're gonna, we're gonna go with some water, but you're gonna need some hydration, a snack, maybe another beverage if you're like me and you usually like to have two on hand at all times, a hydration and a fun one. So, <sighs> all right, I'm gonna try to keep this to a short intro because this is gonna be a long video. We are going to go through all of my fragrance purchases of 2023. I am going to be ranking them. Yes, all of them. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, y'all are gonna be here for a while. You probably could tell from the timing on this video. I am also going to let you know that I'm gonna have uh, chapters down below in case you were like, okay, I just need to know like the cream of the crop, Kelly. I don't really care about all of your ramblings. I just wanna know the cream of the crop. I'm gonna have my top 10 in the chapters down below. And because I am at the end, I am going through ranking all of my full sizes. And then towards the end, I am gonna rank all of my travel sizes slash things that I got from Scentbird, which are more like in that travel size range. But let me tell you, if I counted this correctly, we have 26 maybe 27, now that I just see one that was kind of sneaking at the corner here. 26 or 27 full size fragrances that I purchased or was gifted. I do have a couple in here that were gifted, which I will notate as we go through, but I had to rank them in here as well. And of course my thoughts will be my own. Why don't we just dive in? <laughs> but if we haven't met before, my name is Kelly and I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And here on my channel, I strive to keep beauty real, real honest, real relatable, and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to click subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Like more fragrance videos. I know for sure I'm gonna be doing a winter into spring fragrance tray. <sighs> 2023 was the year of purchasing way too much fragrance. If you watch my beauty goals video for this year, I have put a clinch on the fragrance purchases for the next foreseeable future. What did I put? Three months, six months? I don't even remember. A lot of months where I would not be purchasing fragrance. Uh, I did do a pretty good organization, which has really helped me. I am trying to get through some of my samples and we're doing good so far. But I thought that this would be a good way to look back at the year to really also remind myself of what I have, what I love. Is there anything? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We have, we have a lot. We have over two dozen fragrances here. What could I possibly need? I already have other scents on my wish list. I'm not gonna lie. All right, let me know if you'd like to see a scent wish list video. I, I could do that, I could do that. We're gonna dive right in. I am gonna start with one that I can't exactly rank because I got it at the end of 2023 and I just honestly haven't worn it enough. I did haul it in my recent fragrance haul video. I just really didn't think it was fair to really rank this one considering that I hadn't actually used it a lot. Now, there are a couple in here that I purchased towards the end of the year, but I had either been using samples of them before then or just immediately fell in love with them so quickly that I felt very confident in ranking. But this is not one of those because I really just hadn't used it enough. And this is the Juliana's Perfume Aurora x -Trait. I have the regular Aurora in here that you will see, but I did decide to go ahead and purchase the x which of course is supposed to be a stronger, more bold, more concentrated version. This is Juliana's version of a dupe for the Baccarat Rouge 540. So I am very excited to have this one. By the way, I am not going to go through scent notes for every single one of these scents because that would mean being here for like three or four minutes for each fragrance and that would be a long, long time. So we're gonna try to keep some of these brief. I'll go more into the vibe of the Aurora scents as we get up towards the regular version, but I do definitely feel like this is a more bold version of it. It has a little bit more smokiness, a little bit more pepperiness. It's just more, it's more of all the things, it's stronger. Did I need it considering that I purchased a full size bottle of the regular this year? No, but I just couldn't stop myself. So that's the one that we're not including in here. All right, so starting at the bottom. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna count until we get to like the top 10. <laughs> Okay, so starting at the bottom of my fragrances purchased in 2023. And by the way, I honestly have to say, I don't think that there is a true dud in here. I think that I really like all of these. Ooh, did I purchase anything that I ended up taking back? 
If I did, they're not in here because I didn't write them down. I'm gonna try to do a much better job this year. I'm trying to notate every single one of my purchases this year. We'll see how that goes. So far, I only have one on the list and not a fragrance, but I only have one beauty purchase so far this year. It's already in my notes. We're doing good. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> The one that's at the bottom of my list is from a house that I have actually quite a few fragrances from, and this is Ellis Brooklyn Myth. Now, I picked this up from Ulta in a great sale. It was like sale on sale, plus I had a coupon or something crazy like that, and I just, I just had to get it. Did I need it? Absolutely not. This is really sort of in that like airy, molecular, just has a very light, clean scent. I could see using this in combination with other scents. This is definitely one of those like not a perfume perfumes. So what I might actually do, by the way, is instead of talking about the notes, I might try to have a little like blurb of the notes up here because I'm really just talking about the vibes. And honestly, if you've been watching any of my content, you've probably heard me yammer on about most of these because a lot of them have been featured either in hauls or in favorites videos. But anyway, I will go ahead and have those and I will have them all linked down below. If there's something that sounds like it would tickle your fancy, you can check it out down below. But this was just one that I was like, I've smelled it before. I think it's a good addition fragrance. Like this is a way to add a little something to a fragrance. I think it could enhance a fragrance. It could also like soften something down if you feel like something is too much. I just find that this is one that it's like, was it needed in my collection? No. Is it gonna be something that I use to cocktail? Yes. Or something where it's like a day where I'm like, I just don't know what I wanna wear. I don't know what's gonna be going on. A quick spritz of this and then I know I at least have a little something. So not a regret per se, but definitely one that just isn't unique. All right, now we have this little baby of the commodity milk. I actually got this on the Ipsy slash, it's it, it's just Ipsy now, right? Ipsy and Boxy Charm sort of like had a merger. So I got this in one of their like pop-up sales. I had smelled this fragrance before and while it wasn't one that I was like, yeah, I need to have that in my collection, there's just something unique enough about it that I decided to pick this up in this little small size. What, this is like, not a full size, it's 30 mils. So, oh, I didn't actually purchase a commodity this year. Wow. <laughs> so did I not? Oh, technically not because I have a voucher. I purchased a set with a voucher in it to pick up, but I haven't actually picked it up yet. So no, I did not. But anyway, this scent is very, very sweet, lactonic. Honestly, this reminds me, it's vanilla, but I get spice from it. I always tell people this makes me think of cinnamon toast crunch cereal milk. Like it has, to me, it has a cinnamon note. I don't think it actually has that, but I just get that little bit of spice. Definitely that creamy lactonic vibe, some nice vanilla. It's just very gourmand. It is definitely like, I smell quite lickable. <laughs> and sometimes, most of the time, I'm actually not down for that foodie of a fragrance. So this has to be a vibe. Jeremy really likes this one though, but I do think it's so, so sweet that this is something that I won't wear to work because I think a lot of people could get turned off by this scent. It's, yeah, it's a little on the heavier side. So it is definitely something that's more like cozy vibes, winter thing for me, but it was a good deal on the Ipsy site. Again, I think it's fun. I think it just has to be in the right moment. So I'm glad to just have this little one here. Okay, next we have another fragrance that I got suckered into buying in a really great sale during an Ulta sale, and this is Clinique Calyx. Calyx, Calyx. So this actually was a prescriptive scent at one point in time, and then Clinique ended up taking this over, and it's it's nice. It just is so reminiscent to me because I remember having a smaller size of this, gosh, maybe when I was like 23, 24, something like that. Again, I think I actually got it on sale at some like fragrance counter. I think that they were just like having these little, I remember the little travel sizes being on sale and I was like, oh, I'll try this one. It's really nice. It's citrusy, it's fresh. I kind of get like mandarin, ginger, maybe a little bit of floral, but I mostly get like the fresh citrusy notes, but not in a way that makes it smell like cleaning product. You know, I don't like that. This has enough like tangy spiciness to it that it's just a fun, very uplifting fragrance. I don't find that this has like extended longevity on me, but it's a really great, it's a really great one for mornings where I'm just like kind of feeling sluggish and I just want to like have that boost and feel a little bit more perky. So again, not one that I necessarily needed, but one that I mostly got for nostalgia's sake. And honestly, I think I got this whole thing for like 
$30, $40 at the most. I don't even remember anymore, but it was a really good deal. All right, here's one that wasn't $30 or $40. This is Tonkazur from Pearlescent Perfumes, which I believe is an offshoot of Gallagher Fragrances, which Gallagher is a house that has some fun scents. I remember I got this in my Olfactive subscription. Let me tell you, we're gonna have to count. We're gonna have to do a tally here how many of these I purchased because of Olfactive this year. Dangerous subscription. But I did use my, oh, you know what? I don't know if I ended up using my 15% off because when you're a member, like for the month of the time that you get your subscription, you can get 15% off of any of those scents, but they do also have sales. So I could have picked it up in maybe like a 20% off sale. Regardless, it's not exactly a cheap fragrance, but this is a fresh blueberry. There's, it's a little bit floral, but I get a lot of the berry. It's yummy, but there is something about this. Honestly, I'm gonna tell you right now, and I, oh, I have a sample. I got a sample because after this one came out, they came out with Tonka Peach and I haven't tried it out yet, but I was just so darn curious, but I don't know, this, there's something about the blueberry in this. It was just so unique that I was like, I kind of need this. I don't have anything like this, but is there a reason why I don't have anything like this? Maybe, because I just don't reach for this. I will say the bottle is just absolutely beautiful. There's just something about the beautiful blue and white. I don't know, it's just really pretty. This is a bit of a regret for me, not because it's not a nice fragrance, but I just don't reach for it. There's something in the dry down of this. Oh, I think it also has champagne note. That, I think, it's the blueberries and the champagne, and I just, it is very effervescent. Like, it's bright, fun. I don't know. There's just something about this, though, that after a while I'm like, this probably wasn't a need for me. So I, I should have sat on it for a little bit. I think it was the sale or, you know, being like, ah, I should probably like get the best deal I can on this if I'm even thinking about getting it. And I should have waited. There are always sales. I'm telling you right now, there are always sales. <laughs> Don't feel pressured into getting a fragrance because you will, you will end up getting a deal at some point. Okay, so now the next one, and I have several in this haul from the brand, but this is the one that I had to rank at the bottom of my Etat Libre d'Orange haul. This is Exit the King, and this is a very nice fragrance. It was really hard. It was so hard when I was going through and trying to rank these. I honestly like had everything laid out and I did a little flip-flopping, you know, like a little leapfrogging trying to decide. And again, this is one that it's nice. It's just, it's not as unique. It's a nice little floral. It does have a bit of rose. I get a little bit of like a peppery note. It's fun, it's fresh. It is floral, but not overwhelmingly so. I got a great deal on this on the Joma Shop website, which by the way, I will link down below like the best deals I can find. So if there's anything that Joma Shop has on sale, that's what I'll be linking because now that I know that that's a thing, it's a little dangerous, but you can find some good discount fragrances on there. So Exit the King is a nice one. Again, it's just one that I find I probably won't reach for as often as some of the other ones that are in here. All right, so this next one is another floral and this is Sotile. This was in that same fragrance haul video that I did, but this is one that I tried out, I think at the very beginning of my olfactif uh, journey. But when I went to go get it, they didn't have the full size in stock and I was so bummed. I thought, oh my gosh, Am I not even gonna be able to get this anymore? Like hopefully I can at some point. It just was so lovely. So this is subtle in Italian and this is just a very fresh floral. It's like I said in that video, it is floral without being like punch you in the face floral. It's so much softer than a lot of the designer florals. I feel like this is just so beautifully understated and fresh. I really like this one. The only reason this is ranked so low here is that florals just aren't my main go-to. And I was talking to a friend and I said, you know what? I'm really trying to not take seasonal vibes into consideration when I'm ranking these, but I do sort of wonder if I was ranking these in the summertime, as opposed to like February, we're just gonna let those sirens go. If I was ranking these in the summertime versus in February, would there be a little bit of a shuffle? I'm not sure. So it's kind of impossible for me to not wonder like, 
if I was doing this more in the spring or summer, would I have some of these ranked higher? I'm not sure. Like I said, I really tried to not do that, but I know that florals are something that I don't reach for as much, but gosh, as I'm sitting here smelling this, I'm like, I have to wear this one soon, even though it is the winters. All right, another floral. And in the ranking of this and kind of going back and forth, when I smelled these two together, I was like, are these kind of the same? Are they kind of the same? They're, they're not quite, but I want to talk to you about Ella's Brooklyn Rose. So this is one that I actually got a travel size of, I would say probably two years ago or so, maybe even a little longer than that ago. Uh, I picked it up in an Ipsy slash BoxyCharm pop-up thing. I really like it. And Rose is not something that I would have ever considered myself a huge fan of, but Jeremy really loves it. And I like a rose that smells really like a rose, not like powdery, not like grandma perfume. It really needs to smell like an actual rose. And Ellis Brooklyn does a good job of this. There are also some fresh citrusy notes in this that make it not quite so cloying and heavy as some can be, but this really is very, very rose forward. So I was kind of like, wow, does this smell like Sutile? Because this definitely has that same vibe, a little citrus, all that floral, but they are different. This one is more like, yes, you know it's rose right off the bat, where this is just like a beautiful, fresh floral. So I really struggled. I honestly was not sure where to put which, but I think rose just, it honestly is more of the memories of how I know Jeremy loves it. I know the few times that I remember when I first wore this, he's like, oh, Oh my gosh, you smell so good like rose. And so it's maybe more of that that bumps this one above Sotile. I like them both though. So I have to say, by the way, that I did not purchase this full size. My friend Natalia, my sweet, sweet friend, knew that I was on the hunt for this. And so she actually gave me this for Christmas. I was so excited when I opened it. She is absolutely killer at finding great deals at TJ Maxx and Marshalls. And she has reached out to me about a few other scents that she's found. And I was like, if you ever find Ellis Brooklyn Rose, let me know. And I'm, I'm just so excited to have this one in my collection now. It is towards the bottoms of the rankings of these, but it is still one that I really love. Like I'm honestly, I'm just trying to tell all of these. I love all of you. I love all of you. Please don't get your feelings hurt. <laughs> this is one that it's just because it is so floral and so rose. Again, there just has to be the time and the place for this. I feel like I keep saying that, but it's the truth. It's the truth. All right, so now we're about to get into some of the scents that are sort of in that like little mid range of like, they're not the ones that I was like, eh, I could have done without those, but they're not the like, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna not have these on hand. They're sort of in that like, kind of like middle range. And I really struggled. This is where that flip-flop happened a lot. So this next one I'm gonna pick out partially now because I've actually had this one for a long time in my collection. I did just happen to buy a full size of it this year, but it is one, I don't know, it makes me so happy. It's just, I think I may be ranking it lower because it doesn't have like the novelty, the newness to it. This is Juliet Has a Gun Sunny Side Up. I've talked about this one on my channel for quite a bit. I had a travel size that I had on hand for a really long time, used that travel size up, and then I purchased this at the beginning of the year. And oh, this is just so lovely. It is a creamy sandalwood. I cannot remember anymore. Again, I'll be trying to have the notes up here, but there's something to this that just gives beach vibes, but not in like the dead of summer, you know, like just that like walking along the beach, but there's a breeze going, there's some sun, but it's not overly warm. It's like maybe 70 degrees out, maybe, you know, you could have like maybe even colder than that. It's, it's, it's breezy. I'm telling you, it's, it's just a very breezy scent. So you've got a little light jacket on, maybe a little cute little denim jacket on. Mm, it's, it's just really nice. So this is another one. I mean, this is going to last me a really long time, but it's ranked a little lower here because I have, I have a thing for sandalwood. And so now I have so many sandalwood scents in my collection. You'll see as we get through here, it's kind of ridiculous. I just have a lot of those sort of like sandalwood, cedarwood type vibes, but there still is something just so lovely about this one that just, again, it's another mood boosting, makes me so happy kind of fragrance. So I do really enjoy having this one. It's just, as I was ranking, I'm like, this just doesn't have that like fresh new car vibe to me, you know what I mean? Not in the scent of it, but in the like, oh, it's a new toy to me. So I think she's, she's just ranked lower for that reason. So another one right after this that I am 
basically popping right above this because it's along the same vibes to a point is She Was an Anomaly from Etat Libre d'Orange. And this is just one that again, it has that like woody vibe to it, but it's, it's fresh, it's light. I think in the video, you know, it's sort of like when I smell this, it gives me a little bit of myth vibes, but it's a little bit creamier and just a little bit more unique. And this one just stands out on its own a bit more than myth does. So I, I had to rank it a little bit higher in the list. It's softer in scent than the Sunny Side Up because Sunny Side Up does have those extra notes to it. There's just something about this one that gives me more of like cozy vibes. So this is sort of like, again, walking down the beach on a brisk kind of sunny day. This is more like cozied up in your favorite chair with a throw blanket and your favorite book. Yep, that's it right there. Perhaps a little latte that you're sipping on. A tea latte, not a coffee latte though. Okay. <laughs> So another one that's actually kind of along these lines, and this is actually a full size product. This is the Riddle Oil in the original scent. This one was actually sent to me by the brand. They sent me their set of the little trial sizes. I actually did a review on all of the Riddle Oil, so I'll make sure to have that link down below, by the way, if you do wanna check out this brand. And honestly, there were several scents that I really loved. And I was having issues with one of the little roller balls. And uh, when I reached out to them about it, all of a sudden they sent the original oil along with it. So I was like, oh, that's really nice because I do really like this one. Now this is a scent that again, to me has a very cozy skin musk sandalwood vibe to it. It's a great layerable. I actually got the Milky Lotion as well, which is just lovely. This scent is, it stands on its own as a, like I said, a skin scent, a very personal scent, but it has enough creaminess to it that it's really kind of sexy, cozy, very lovely. So good. So if you are someone who enjoys a fragrance oil, definitely check into the brand. Like I said, there were several scents that I really enjoyed. Uh, this is not an inexpensive product, but because it is a perfume oil, a little goes a long way. I find that these have a decent lasting power on the skin, but I know that the brand even says, because this is sort of like a pheromone scent, sometimes you just become nose blind to it. You can't really smell it on yourself anymore, but it's others who were like, oh, that's lovely. You know, it's not like, wow, that's perfume. It's just like, dang, you smell good. So I just, I just want to put that out there because I've definitely experienced that with this where it's like, gosh, this is just so soft, blends into my vibe so much. And I'm like, can, can I even smell this anymore? And even if I don't, someone else is really enjoying it, but it kind of depends on if you're the person where you still want to smell yourself. Wow. Things are getting weird. Let's move on. Okay. So this next one was also sent to me. That's funny because I think that these are the two that I received in PR and they're back to back with each other. But this is Goddess from Burberry. If you like vanilla, this is a great one to check out. I have really enjoyed wearing this. In fact, I personally think for someone who has 26 fragrances just purchased this year, that actually having a little dip in this when I got it just this fall is actually pretty impressive. I've worn this a lot. It is vanilla, like it has a trio of vanillas in it, but it also has lavender, which gives this a, it just lightens it up a little bit. You know, it, it just makes it smell like really high-end vanilla soap. I think that's what I said when I was reviewing this and oh, it is just lovely. It's a vanilla without being like too cloyingly sweet. It's very balanced, very beautiful, gorgeous bottle. They did a really great job with this one. So thanks to Burberry for sending that one over. It's definitely one that I have gotten a lot of use out of. All right, I have three cents from Imaginary Authors in this little ranking. <sighs> It's a brand that I really kind of got into this year. Now, this is a fragrance brand that I've really become intrigued with, but the one thing I will say is this is a brand where you really want to try a sample before you buy because these are all very unique and sometimes in a, well, almost always in a really surprising way, sometimes, wow, what a surprise. Or sometimes it's like, oh, what a surprise. So it just really kind of depends. So I would definitely get your nose on these before you purchase. I also have to say, this is the only one with a cap that is easy to get off. The rest of these caps are like Spanx and it's like, it's a lot to get these off. But let's talk about Cape Heartache. Again, this is one that is so unique. I love this. It's green, it's earthy, it's a little bit fruity. I remember when I first got this and I got this, I don't know if it was in a subscription from Olfactif, but I got the sample from Olfactif. So again, it's their fault, not mine. 
I did purchase this though. So since the brand puts some of the notes, the main notes on the package here, I'm just gonna let you know that it's Douglas fir, pine resin, western hemlock, vanilla leaf, strawberry, old growth, and mountain fog. So like I said, you get that green, it's, it's crisp though. It's not like dank, musky green. It's a crisp, light, breezy green, but that strawberry comes through. It's so unique. Again, this was one that I really was like, gosh, it is so unique. It's so fun, but it is one again that I just have to find the right vibe for. I really enjoy wearing it, but it's one that I think sometimes people could be like, what is that? But I love it. I think it's so fun. So it's definitely one to get your nose on if you like a more like nature inspired, fresh, but not a citrus fresh. And if you love strawberry, but you want something that isn't like sticky sweet, this is one to try. Love it. All right, this next one is one of the two that I purchased from Heretic this year. This is Dirty Hinoki, and I got this in Scentbird, I think, originally, and there was something about it that I was just like, gosh, I really love this. I need to give this one a go, and I decided to get the full size when the brand was having a pretty good sale. So I picked this up, and I also picked up a travel size scent of another one that I was really curious about, this is definitely that woody scent, but it has, I don't know, just like a little twist to it. I think what I find really unique about this is I get a warmth, like warm wood, maybe not on fire, cause there's not like a lot of smokiness, but like if planks of wood have been sitting out in the sun for a while and they start to have that like warm wood scent, you get that from this. There's a little bit of an earthiness. Now I will say most days, if I want to feel my most confident in wearing this, I am gonna pair this with something else. You know, it would really help add some layers of depth to a citrus. It could really kind of like give some sexy vibes to something that's a little sweeter. So I think that this is a great layerable. There are times that I wear it on its own, but sometimes I just feel like, is this really my vibe on its own? But it is very unique. So I'm glad that I have it. I'm glad that I got a good deal on it. So now we have a brand that I just found this year. This is DS and Durga. And I remember being really intrigued by the scent descriptions on quite a few of these. And I considered buying a sampler, but then when my friend Liz and I were in Chicago this summer for the Polish and Beauty Expo, uh, Liz is a fragrance nerd like I am. I think we both went down a scent spiral this year. And so we decided when we were in Chicago to hunt down some of the brand scents because I know that she had a few that she wanted to try. I had a few that I wanted to try. It was a whole thing. We ended up at the Murs Apothecary in Chicago after a trek around town, a little sweaty walk with no avail, but they sent us to the right place. And so we had such a fun time getting to smell more scents than anyone should smell in a single day. But this is one that I ended up picking up after that trip, and this is Debaser. And this is a primarily fig forward scent, and it is that green fig. It's not so much the fruity part of the fig. I mean, you do get a little bit of that, but I definitely more get like fig leaf out of this. It's fresh, it's different, it's unique. It is the most green fig fragrance that I have. I have a couple of their fragrances in my collection that have fig notes to them, but this is the most fresh, I don't wanna say bitter, but if you've ever smelled fig leaf, you'll know what I mean by that, like that zing, that almost like bergamot vibe that it can have sometimes. So I really enjoy this one. It just has some really fun memories from that trip as well. So I remember it was this one and another one that's in here, which I ended up buying as well. And I had one on each wrist and just like all day, I was like, okay, which one, which one? <laughs> and of course, at some point I ended up getting them both because that was the theme of 2023. Get them all. <laughs> okay, here is the other heretic fragrance in this lineup. This is Dirty Coconut. And like I said, I actually picked up the small size of this uh, when I picked up the Dirty Hinoki. And there is just something to this one. I think this was actually in my favorites last month because while this is coconut, it is very light, fresh, fun. It's not like overly beach vibes. It's not suntan lotion. It is really that like light airy coconut. I really like this one. Again, it's another one that's great to cocktail with. If you like a coconut, but you don't want something that's overly sweet, I think that this is one that you might want to try out. I really like it. I at some point would like to smell all of the heretic fragrances. You know, sometimes I read the scent description and I'm like, 
half of that sounds really good and half of it sounds like a big turnoff to me. So I definitely feel like the rest of them I need to get my nose on before I would do a blind buy. I happen to luck out and both of the ones, well, I guess the Dirty Hinoki wasn't a blind buy other than the fact that I did buy it through Scentbird and you know, like them both. So very happy to have both of those. Now here is the other scent. When I was talking about the two wrist experience when I was in Chicago, this is the other one. This is Diptyque's Ilio. And I actually ended up getting this on Poshmark or Mercari after the fact, because I found someone who was selling it at a pretty good deal. Oh, this is so good. So prickly pear is one of the main notes in this, and it is just so fun. There's something very summery about this. This was limited edition. It actually was a launch from a year or two ago. And so when they brought it back this last summer, I definitely had sort of like panic, <laughs> panic vibes. Cause I was like, wait, they brought it back. Is it limited edition again? Am I going to be sad if I don't get it? And so I was on the hunt to be able to get it for a good deal. And I really did get it for a pretty good deal. But I think that the uniqueness of this, I would have been okay if I ended up having to pay full price with a sale. You know, we always get a sale. There is just something about this that is very summery to me. Spring and summer, I don't, without being that like typical spring summer fragrance. There's just something very, very fresh about this. That prickly pear scent in here is so fun. It makes me want to hunt out other prickly pear fragrances. So if you like prickly pear, let me know a couple of yours down below. All right. I just realized I got so excited that I started to go all the way through and we've actually made it to my top 10 fragrances right now. <laughs> I, I've just been yammering on. I was like, oh my gosh, I never did the marker where we have the top 10 fragrances. So we're going to cut back into me getting super excited about fragrances with my top 10. This is my last Etat Libre d'Orange scent in here. And this is one that I blind bought. It was such a good deal on the site and the notes sounded great and the reviews sounded right up my alley. So I decided to get Noel au Balcon, which is Christmas on the balcony. And this is definitely, I've been wearing this one a lot in the last couple weeks. Uh, in the haul video, I said that this kind of to me smells like when around the holidays, you put a simmering pot of water on the stove with orange slices, cloves, maybe a cinnamon stick. I don't really get a lot of cinnamon out of this. I do get more clove out of it. It just has that beautiful, warm, slightly spicy, a little bit of citrus vibe to it. I love this. I almost also get like a slight bit of like licorice root or something, just something that has that like deep, sexiness to it. I love this. I am so glad that I got this. I feel very, very lucky <laughs> to have ended up liking this one because, you know, like I said, blind buys don't always go that well, but I do feel like now that I have, you know, done such a deep dive, usually when I read through the notes, I will know if I'm going to like something or not. Sometimes it can get a little tricky depending on where they land. Cause there are a couple things that I'm like, I don't like that at the tippy top. Don't put it like sent forward, but if it's living somewhere underneath for some balance, I can get along with it. Patchouli, I'm talking to you, but I feel like at this point I know myself enough to usually do okay. But this was, this was one of the few that I took the risk on this year. So Noel au Balcon, if you like a little spicy, sexy scent, definitely check that one out. Speaking of blind buys, this was a blind buy. And this was one that I sort of gave into that limited edition slight panic because when this came out, they were like limited edition and it sounded like a lot of notes that I want. And I was like, I don't know how many bottles of this they're making. I did see that they're on like the final throws of it right now. And this is blend number 83 by imaginary authors. And this is inspired by a espresso martini. And they did it in collaboration with Absolute and Kahlua. <sighs> this is just so, so good. Oh, did I say espresso martini or did I say chocolate martini? Honestly, this is like an espresso chocolate martini. Yes. And you know, it's not overly sweet. So don't think like mocha latte, right? It's not like extra sugary. And that's what I love about this because I don't want a chocolate scent that smells like a Tootsie Roll, that smells like a hot fudge sundae. I want that earthiness that you get from cocoa. Like I want it to have a little dirtiness to it, give me the darker side of life when it comes to a chocolate scent. And that's what I get out of this. So the notes on here are dark chocolate, sugar cane rum, Arabica coffee, velvety foam, benzoin, night musk, and decadence. So I do think that it's that benzoin that really gives it that kind of like earthiness to this. And again, like I said, this is not an overly sweet cloying chocolate. 
and this is exactly what I love. And anytime I can get a little bit of a coffee fix in my day, even if it's through my fragrance, it's going to be a good day. So very glad I picked this one up. This is one that I'm not gonna stick on for long because I've been yammering about this one a lot recently, the Montagna Perfumes Arabian Orient. Love it. It's like under $50, I think. You can get it for an excellent price when Olfactif is having a great sale. This is another one that I got through that scent subscription and that I ended up buying a full size of. No regrets at all. The notes on here are raspberry, caramel, and saffron. It's just beautifully like sexy, sweet, spicy, a little fruity. It's a little bit of everything, creamy. I absolutely love this one. I've worn it quite a bit, not that you can tell, but I have worn it quite a bit. So very glad to have this one. All right, another one that I can blame on Olfactif because I picked it up when I tried it out in the Scent subscription. This is the last of the imaginary authors. I actually really had a hard time deciding which was going to be at the head of the class as far as from this brand, but I just remember the sheer joy that I had when I tried this. And this is so different than what I would usually like because it is very fruit forward. It's a little bit sweeter. It just smells so good. So. This was the year of raspberry for me because I picked up three scents that have raspberry in them and raspberry is not one of the things that I would ever think that I would love the scent of, you know? Like I'm not one to get like a raspberry candle, a raspberry lip gloss, like that's just not a scent note that I like align myself with normally, but this is just so lovely. So this has raspberry, citrus pulp, coconut palm sugar, Madame Isaac Perrier, sandalwood, tropical punch, and stardust. And I will say that this absolutely smells like Hawaiian punch with some raspberry, with some sugar, but not like cloyingly sweet sugar. This is sweet. This is definitely one of the sweeter fragrances in here, and it's definitely one of the most fruity fragrances that's in here, but there's just something so fun and youthful to this one. This is gonna be one that I'm gonna use a lot in spring and summer. Oh, I'm just so excited to pull this one out again. It's just happiness in a bottle. It's happiness in a bottle and who can beat that? Okay, so here is one that I've had the sample of for quite a while and I did not pull the trigger on buying a full size until Olfactif had their end of the year sale. I think it was like right around the holidays. This is another one again that I got in my subscription and this is Jaipur Chai. This is inspired by a chai latte and that is exactly what you get from this. It is not overly sweet. You have those very common notes in chai, super cozy, spicy, not overly sweet. It is lovely. Oh, there's just something so unique and yummy about this one. And it's, it's just very different. It smells very niche to me. And I don't know how to explain that other than like, you can get spicy fragrances from other brands, you know, like the designer brands, they have some different spicy scents, but they kind of all eventually smell just like perfume, right? Like, I don't know how to explain it. They just smell like fragrance. Whereas this smells like an experience. It smells like a scent memory to me. And that's just so special. So that's why this one is up so high here. All right, we are moving into the top five. The top five fragrances, let's get into this. This is another one from Juliana's Perfume and this is Spirit of Mojave. And this is a dupe for uh, Byredo's Mojave Ghost. Now, it's been a while since I've smelled that one to let you know whether or not it is like an exact dupe, but it is lovely. It's amazing and great. And that's what matters to me. It's not about the dupe factor. It's about the fragrance factor. I picked up a sample of this one at some point. I can't remember if I originally picked up a bunch of samples to try them out or if I did a full size purchase and then got some samples. I don't know, but this year I got a lot of Juliana's perfume <laughs> samples and this is one that I tried and I just really liked it. This is just so fresh and unique and soft, a little bit sweet. I know that there are some floral notes in here, but it doesn't smell like a bouquet to me. I just really love this. I've gotten a lot of compliments when I've worn this one. This just smells like freshly showered clean girl wearing something with a little je ne sais quoi. That's what I'm gonna go with. All right, so number four is Enlightenment from Christelle Jacumin. Jacumin, sorry, I am not quite sure how to pronounce the last name, but let me tell you, this fragrance is absolutely amazing. And I remember, again, this is another olfactive fragrance. They described it as like, have you ever wondered 
what it's like walking through fresh, crisp snow on an icy day or something like that. And I was like, yes, yes, I have wondered. I mean, not really because I live in Wisconsin, so I definitely know what that's like, but this is way better than that. There is just something so effervescent, fresh, light. I just smell fresh air and magic from this. I, I don't know how to explain it. It just, this is so unique. It, and I have told a couple friends about this one that have gotten samples of it. And while nobody was like, oh my God, that's disgusting. I don't think anyone really aligned with this quite as much as I do. I don't know what it is. Maybe there's something from my childhood that I'm getting from this or something, but like, it's just wonderful. It is just magic. If you like a fresh scent, and I just mean like clean, like, kind of out of the shower vibes. It's not soapy. It's not extra citrusy. There's some herbs in this that just give it some brightness, but it doesn't smell like something you'd rub on chicken before you put it in the oven. I don't mean herbs like that. If you like clean air, like alpine snow, just that like snowy foresty vibe, this is amazing. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So let's move on to number three. All right, here we are with Juliana's Perfume Aurora. Like I said, at the very beginning of this video, I got the Aurora X Straight at the end of the year, and I picked this one up towards the beginning of the year. And I remember I did like a little battle of the fragrances because I do have a sample of the MFK Baccarat Rouge 540. So I did a little like wrist to wrist test of this. At that time, I didn't really know about maceration and letting small batch fragrances sit and sort of meld and, you know, get their little juice party on and they actually get a little bit stronger. I don't know that that makes this a closer dupe to the original, but let me tell you, when I did put this one away for a little bit and I was like, oh my God, this smells even better. I loved it from the get go, but now it has just become so much of a love that again, I did decide to get the x-ray version of it. I really think that Juliana's does a nice job. You know, for most of their fragrances being in that, I think 50 to $60 range, it's a great deal. The bottle has just enough to it that it feels a little cute, but you're not just spending most of your money on packaging. I really enjoy this one. It's sweet, it's sexy. Jeremy absolutely loves it. Every time I wear it, he's like, oh my gosh, wow, that smells amazing. This is one again for me that I will mostly wear in the slightly cooler months because in the summertime, this would just get too cloying. It's just too sweet, but it is more of that like boozy, heady, rich sweet, not like spun sugar, cotton candy, icky sticky sweet. This is definite sexy vibes and I am here for it and I have worn it quite a bit. All right, here we are a number two. <sighs> And I wasn't sure how quite to place these last two fragrances. So if you stick around for number one, you'll understand why. But my number two slot is going to 4160 Tuesday's Fruits of the Tree of Knowledge. This is another one that, like I said, the minute I tried it, I was like, oh my gosh, that is so unique. And I think actually the video that Jeremy and I did when I originally got my Olfactive subscription where I was getting both the three women's and the three men's scents, Jeremy and I did a video together going over all of the scents and this was in that set. And it was just so unique. I was like, wow, that is a little different. It's again, it's a little bit fruity, but it's not so fruity that it's like cloyingly like gourmand. There's just a freshness. There's a citrus vibe to this. It's just so lovely. It's, it honestly is just like fresh, like squished fruit. I don't know how to explain that. You know, it's not fruity candy. It's not like fruit juice. It just has a freshness to it. Like almost the fresh vibe of enlightenment. That one that's sort of like Alpine snow air has a little bit of that vibe to it along with the fruitiness. And I've tried several other scents from 4160 Tuesdays since trying this one. None of them have been quite it for me. They do have quite a bit of some gourmand fragrances. I know my friend Kara from Beauty and the Frizz when I was telling her about how much I love this one, she found a couple fragrances that she really loves from the brand and there's just something, there's just something that's so fun about these. So I absolutely love this one. This is one that I actually like wearing when it gets a little bit warmer out because the strength of it comes out a little bit more. This one doesn't last all day for me, but when it's something that's like, fresh and light like this. I really don't anticipate it to do that, but this is one that, again, like I said, I got it in the Olfactive subscription. And then when I went online to like look for it and I was so panicked because this is a UK based brand. And so as far as I saw, 
I believe that Olfactif was the only site. There might be one other site that carries the brand, but they didn't have this scent itself. And I think that, again, you know, you've got a small company that's doing small batch fragrances, so I don't think they have everything in rotation at every time. So it's like, I definitely panic bought. Like this one, I probably should have waited for, you know, a seasonal sale, but I did take advantage of the 15% off. Is it 15 or 10%? Whatever it is that members get, I bought it. Cause I was like, oh, if I don't get this in my life and it goes away, I'm gonna be so, so sad. So when I start getting down, I will absolutely purchase a uh, backup bottle. I absolutely will. I'm gonna be that fragrance hoarder. <laughs> it's gonna take me a while to get through this, but I definitely will do that. It is so yummy. Like I said, it just makes me so happy. A lot of this is like that vibe that I get when I use these, right? So the notes don't even matter so much to me. It's really about like how it makes me feel. So this is definitely deserving of that spot. Now, that I will say is actually technically my top number one fragrance because the number one fragrance now, the technical number one fragrance is sort of an honorary mention, because it's one that I bought for Jeremy, but it's one that I just love so much. And you know, having him smell good makes me really happy. So I absolutely had to put it in here. And that is the scent Orion from Tiziana Terenzi. First of all, can we just talk about this bottle? Like I probably should have weighed this. This thing has to weigh at least a pound, at least a pound. Like, yeah, I mean, just the cap itself. The, most of the weight is in this cap. So first I'm gonna show you the cap here. And I gave this to Jeremy as a little surprise Christmas gift. We usually don't do Christmas gifts. We like to do experiences, but I found this for a really, really, really great deal. Thank God, because I'll tell you the story behind this in just a moment. And we absolutely both love this fragrance. So he actually said, he's like, uh, do I have to keep the cap on here? This is kind of ridiculous. I was like, no, you don't at all. So he's like, I'm gonna keep that as a paperweight in my office. And I'm like, do it. Use every single bit of this because you know, it's pricey enough to where like, I'm glad that you have a couple different ways to, to use it. So he just keeps this in the bedroom and then this is in the office. And like this, again, it was like a whole experience. I actually told him, I was like, don't throw away the box yet. I'm gonna show it on YouTube in my fragrance like countdown. So I had him save the box. So like, you know, and he went to open it. And I remember we were in the bedroom and I was like, okay, uh, just be very careful. Cause I could have just seen him like, opening it and it falls on the ground and crashes and shatters and that would have been so so sad so i was like just be kind of careful so you really do have beautiful packaging a beautiful you know bottle a little ridiculously heavy cap but he's getting good use out of it and i'm so glad because the scent just smells so amazing on him and it's really quite unique i've tried a couple other samples of pineapple scents since then like i think actually creed aventus is one that has a pineapple note to it and it's not quite the same it's just not the same and so when i saw this on sale i decided to snag it because let me tell you i got the sample of this in my uh like i said in my scent bird because the notes of it just sounded so unique i was like yeah i think i really kind of want to try that and if it's not something that i would like i actually think that jeremy might like it and i didn't like it it was just too cologne-ish for me it is i think more of like a unisex fragrance but for me it just wasn't the vibe and when I gave it to him, I was like, oh, okay, but that smells great on you. And then I went and I looked up how much this was at full price. And I was like, mm, that's never happening. When this little scent bird sample is gone, that is gonna be the end of it because uh, Jeremy will never buy anything at that price and he would just like pass out if he ever knew that I spent that much money on a scent. So I didn't. And then, like I said, I found it uh, on Joma Shop actually. I'd been looking everywhere for this scent. And so when I ended up finding it on Joma Shop, I like was so, so, so excited and ended up snagging it. So he will have it for a long time. He still has the tiniest bit in his Scentbird subscription vial. And so I was like, save that. We'll take it on vacation this year and that will be the end of it, and we've really gotten to enjoy it. Okay, so that is the top rankings of all of my full sizes. I am very quickly just going to run through the travel sizes for you, so stick around if you are a fragrance nerd like me and you are curious. I'm just gonna run through these quite quickly. Most of them are from Scentbird. I really enjoyed getting to have a Scentbird subscription. I did cancel it uh, just because I've clearly got a lot of fragrance to go through, but maybe this would be helpful to you if you have a Scentbird subscription and you're looking for a few things to add to your list, or maybe you're just curious about what I've loved. I do have a couple of these on a wish list to get in full size at some point, so let's dive in. 
Okay, since it's in this little basket, I will show you. This is how much of that Orion scent that Jeremy has left. So it'll be just enough to take on vacation. But this is at the top. This is at the top. That's kind of cheating, like I said. So since it's not for me, so stay tuned to see the one that is at the top because it's on my to get list for sure. At the bottom here, we have another DS and Durga fragrance. This is pistachio. And I just found this. It should be called Pachulio like not pistachio. I get 97% patchouli from this and then the nuttiness just comes out at the end. Like, and I am just not one for patchouli, like especially not like heavy, heavy patchouli. I gave this to Jeremy thinking that maybe it would be one that's good to like cocktail with something, something like that where it's like, okay, you can mix it. But wow, this initially is just so, so strong. Like I'm like, spray this an hour before you're going anywhere. Cause to me, it's just, it's just too much, it's just too much. So this was not one that I enjoyed, but I'm sure at some point he will go through it. The next one is from Juice and, or Eau de Juice, and this is Pure Sugar. This honestly is one that I didn't pick out at one point I was considering canceling. And of course they're like, oh, hey, if you keep your subscription, we'll send you this little freebie. And I was like, fine, fine. It just smells sweet. It's a light, sweet scent. Like there's nothing that special to this one for me. It's okay, like I will gladly use it. I can use it when I want like a little sweetness added to something. I think that this would actually be a good fragrance to get someone who's either, you know, just wanting to start getting past body mists and into something a little bit more like a real fragrance, you know, like if you have a teenager that's looking for something, this could be good. It's definitely, I would say more refined than like um, pink sugar, right? That was one that like everybody was like going gangbusters for and that one just kind of smells cotton candy-ish to me. This one is a little bit more refined than that, but still kind of like along those vibes. Okay, here was one that I tried in my commodity huge exploration kit and I was like, this is so nice. It's so nice. It's so subtle though. This is paper in the uh, personal version. So paper minus, if you will. I really like this. However, now after having so many sandalwood type scents, something like this that is in that like molecular, just very light, crisp way, I don't think I would ever get a full size because it's just not necessary. I'm gonna have fun having this one. This for me is a great bedtime fragrance. It's that sort of like skin scent, very soft. It's nice, but at this point I have so many things like I could pull out Myth or I could pull out She's an Anomaly and still have something in that same vibe. So I'm probably gonna pass on getting that one at some point, but I did really enjoy it and I will definitely use it up. Coconut Cove from Skylar. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> with Scentbird, you basically put things on a queue and then they get sent to you. And so like, whether you're doing one cent a month, you're doing two or three cents a month, I think you have the option. You put things on the queue and then you can kind of like put them up, put them down, rearrange them, flip flop, whatever. And at one point I just had thrown some things on my list that I was sort of curious about and I kind of forgot that it was time for my scent subscription to come up. And this was sent to me and I was like, oh, no, 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 I wanted to take that off because I've just found that like most Skylar scents, I just don't connect with. I just find them to be a little too light and airy, a little less than unique. And that really is kind of how I feel about Coconut Cove. It's fine, it's fine. It's a decent coconut scent. I do like the fact that it's not, again, overly sweet, over like pina colada-y, but it's not, it's not one that I needed to get. It's not one that I needed to get, so. That was kind of a whoopsie. However, it's not one that I needed to get, but it's still above some of these others. Okay, here is a roller ball that I actually picked up after going into Sephora, doing a little scent dive for the VIB sale. And I think it was actually in the spring. This is very much not a spring fragrance in my opinion, but this is the replica on a date. So of course this is a Maison Margiela. Now I was very curious to try this one because it has black currant in it. And I have another scent. There was something else that I tried that had currants in it. And I was like, okay, I'm really on this current vibe. Like, I wanna try this out. I tried it out and I was like, that is really unique. It's kind of strong at the beginning. I think there's some patchouli in this. I think there's some patchouli in this and I kind of get that at first until it sort of dries down. I do really like this one. Now, the only thing I regret is I got this and then I realized that it was actually in this scent sampler last spring. So I picked this up thinking, oh, I'll just return this one to the store unopened, no problem. And then uh, time just went by and I never did. So now I have these other scents in here that I need to go through to see if I want 
one of these instead because this was a much better deal. Well, not a much better, but it was a better deal than this, especially considering that there were other samples in here. I'm trying this out. I'm talking about these scents in my scent Sunday on Instagram, if you're curious. Mm, some Sundays, not every Sunday, but some Sundays, my friend Stephen Ford and I talk about scent samples in our collection. So I thought that I would feature the ones in here since I need to use that voucher that I got last spring, y'all, last spring, it's time. So I thought I was gonna get this. Now I have this one, so I'm gonna have to pick another scent out of here. It's a whole thing. This is what happens when you're a fragrance hoarder and you don't control yourself. So anyway, <laughs> I do really like this. Uh, it is very much date night scent. So it is something that I will pretty much wear when I know that it's just gonna be Jeremy and I, cause he likes those sort of like sexy scents. I do think it's too much for my work day. It would be too much for the everyday or in the summer, but it is a lovely, sexy, rich scent. So I do really like it. This next one actually came in a duo with a scent that I talked about earlier. So this is Ellis Brooklyn Sci-Fi. And this is one that was on my to try list for a very long time. I think I saw Lauren May Beauty talking about this and she described this as sort of like creamsicle in a fragrance. I don't know that I would go quite so far because it's not super sweet, but it does have that orange and vanilla in it, but it is sort of like perfumey. It's a it's definitely not as gourmand as like a regular creamsicle. It is kind of a fun one. I don't think it is full bottle worthy for me, but I got it because it actually came with a travel size, which I have tucked away somewhere, uh, but it's a travel size of Ellis Brooklyn Rose. And I know that I am very, very close to using up my sample of Ellis Brooklyn Rose. So I have that one somewhere. So technically that's also in here, but since I already talked about it here, I probably don't need to do that. It would probably be right after this one at any rate, but that floral I just really enjoy. And since I was almost out of that travel size, I was like, gosh, this is a really great deal for both. And then I have one of each. So enjoy this one. Glad I tried it, but very glad I got it in a travel size. All right, I'm not gonna stick on this one too long. Heretic Dirty Hinoki, really like it. I think it is a unique woodsy scent. Speaking of woodsy scents, we have two here from Sense of Wood. We have Sandalwood and Oak, and orange and chestnut. I would say that orange and chestnut is a little bit higher for me than the sandalwood and oak, just because again, I have so many sandalwood fragrances, but you get that extra like woody, like honestly, like cask aged vibe from both of these. So they are unique, but I think that just that like orange note that's in the orange in chestnut just like knocks it above a little bit for me. All right, this is one that I really love and I think it's fun and unique. This is Confessions of a Rebel Bite Me. It was the apple note in this. It was the apple note in this that I just thought was super fun. This again is one that for me is more of a fall and winter vibe or like date night. It isn't like overly cloyingly heavy, but it does have a little bit of a deeper sexy vibe. So this is one that I do, I just try to be aware, you know, as a hairdresser and makeup artist, I am living my life so close to my clients. So I do try to be aware of stronger scents and I don't choose to wear those for work, but this is a fun one. Anything with an apple note, I kind of feel like, does this have honey in it? I tell you what, if something has honey in it, I'm automatically gonna be drawn to it. I'm automatically gonna be drawn to it. So I feel like this one might, it might, I can't remember, but you'll be able to know because I will have posted the notes. All right, my number one sample size, travel size, if you will, not sample size. This is going on my wish list. I don't think I'm gonna be picking up anytime soon because it is expensive. This is from Initio and this is Side Effect. This has to be one of the sexiest scents I have ever smelled. Oh my God, it is just so good. So this is sort of the like yummy trifecta for me. It has, I think like a boozy note, a spicy note and like a vanilla. I don't know. It's like sexy, confident, badass, feminine. So good. It's so, so good. I actually did pick up from Juliana's perfume. They have a dupe for this. I haven't tried it out yet, but it is one that I picked up. So I'll be letting you know in the future because if I really like that one and I can save the money and I don't have to get the full size of the Initio when this is gone, that would be killer. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> All right, 
we did it. You did it. Thank you for sticking around with me through all of this. I hope that you found this fun, helpful, entertaining. I always have fun doing these videos. Like I said, I'm a big fragrance nerd. Honestly, I always say like these fragrance videos don't always perform the best on my channel but it's just a part of who I am. So I, I would just feel inauthentic if I didn't share my love of fragrance with all of you. So I hope that you did find it helpful. If you have any questions about any of these, let me know. But like I said, they will all be linked down below. It really would help me out. It would help me kind of like burst into the world of fragrance videos here on YouTube. If you do give this video a like, let everybody know that they should be checking out my thoughts. I appreciate you all and I will see you really soon.